Califon, you played Dr. Danny Santino on Necessary Roughness. Yet another strong, sassy, sexy uh, woman. Are, are you drawn to those types of characters? Uh, I, I am drawn to them. And um, I, I think that I have been very lucky. And, and many of the jobs that I've had, the sort of the more longer term jobs that I've had, um, have all had a lot of sass. And, the, you know, they've had a lot of balls. Um, and I think that, you know, Dr. Danny is very similar to um, my other favorite roles in that she's so much fun to play. Um, but it isn't all just about comedy. It, you know, like it, it, she's very layered. And, and I think that that has a lot to do also with the fact that she's based uh, on a real person, which that's the first time I've ever, you know, had the honor of, of portraying a real person. Well, it is based on this uh, New York Jets uh, psychologist. Did you did you meet with her much? Did you study her? I did. Well, I didn't meet her before. Uh, you know, I, when I had tested for the role, um, I had only known of her. They had sent me a link to her website, so I was able to sort of see what she looked like, and I read um, some of her articles and stuff. But I didn't want to meet her before I auditioned. Um, you know, you've got so many things going on. You're so nervous about so many other things pre-auditioning, uh, especially at that level. Um, and they had already said that she wouldn't be in the audition room, you know, because I think they also knew uh, how, how nerve-wracking that could be for someone who's, you know, trying to get a job. So as soon as I got the job, like literally in the same phone call, um, they said, you know, uh, she happens to be in New York. Dr. Donna, her name is Dr. Donna, Dr. Donna Dan and Belser. And she said, um, they said, she happens to be in New York and would you like to meet her? And by the next day, we were um, meeting for dinner on my block. And um, uh, I had literally, it was one of the best first impression meetings with someone I'd, I'd ever had. I was very nervous. And it turns out that she was very nervous, too, which I couldn't figure out why. I was like, look, if you don't like me, I'm out of a job. <laughs> um, but, um, but we have very similar sense of humor, and, and that was evident as soon as we, like, hugged in our, in our initial meeting. And in return, I promise complete confidentiality. Coach, girlfriend, God himself... I will not divulge to anyone what is said. You know, uh, shrinks on TV have been, you know, around since the beginning of TV, like lawyers and, and doctors. And did, have you got any favourite shrinks? Like, you know, just from the top of my head, I can think of Frasier and Dr. Melfi and um, Councillor Troy. Have you got any inspirations for your uh, job as a shrink on telly? Oh, hmm. Well, I do love Gabriel Byrne on, on In Treatment, um, and there was something so comforting about the way that he uh, listened as a therapist, listens as a therapist on In Treatment. But I have to say that most of my, my research in terms of a therapist is really my own because um, I'm a, I, I love therapy. I've been going to therapy forever, <laughs> and um, and uh, I I have been going to this particular woman for the past almost decade, and um, and uh, she not only helps me, you know, in my real life, and uh, but I also really sort of took on a lot of her energy as well as Dr. Donna's when I was thinking about how to bring Dr. Danny to life. A lot of the shows on USA uh, are slightly lighter in tone, um, and generally it seems that most of the quality on TV these days is on cable, um, and you've been on a cable series before, but you've not been the star of that show until now. Um, tell us about whether that was that's something that you've uh, wanted to keep doing, you know, working on cable TV, and what is it like working on uh, uh, for USA? Um, that's a very good question. Um, it, well, I have been so lucky previous to Necessary Roughness that in all my jobs uh, I was part of an ensemble. And I really, like, I think I'm, I'm probably uh, one of the only actors you might meet that would say that I never actually even dreamed of, of leading my own show. I, I have thrived in an ensemble environment 
and been so lucky with the shows that I've been on. And I've also, I think also watching the people that lead those shows, for instance, Dennis Leary uh, on Rescue Me for seven seasons, watching um, what he had on his shoulders. Obviously, he had much more because he was writing and producing and all of that. But um, it seemed very daunting to me. And I, I liked being part of the, the sort of the supporting layer that, that sort of, you know, is there to, to push the, um, the, the A storyline along. Um, and so I never really thought about becoming the lead of a show, um, and uh, that I was very nervous that maybe I would like bring a show down to a grinding halt if if I was a, um, the person that was there every day, all day, um, and I think that in terms of cable, and you know, again, it's it's something that. Being part of an ensemble on cable, where you get to tell much riskier, much more riskier stories, and you know, on certain stations you can swear and you can show lots of body parts, and and you can go fairly far in um, in sort of sexual situations. Um, when you're on a station like USA, which is much more sort of family oriented and um, and uh, a little bit, it, it sort of, it made it easier for me to think about how much I would have to reveal of myself, if that makes any sense. Like, I liked the idea of, for my first time of, um, of being like number one on the call sheet, I liked the idea of, of, of doing that on USA because the environment is so warm and so friendly and I love the the messages of each show and I think that if I was on a cable show and I was maybe worrying about having to show my body um you know uh, uh, or or being in in sort of more riskier situations I don't know how comfortable I would have been leading a show like that we mentioned ensemble shows from your past, and I gotta tell you, Homicide is one of my favorite shows of all time. Yeah. So I had a couple Me of questions. Too. One was, what was your experience like on that show? And secondly, what is it like joining a show that's already been around for a while and everybody's already a family and then you come in and you join? Uh, you know, it, it, it was, it was very interesting because when I got Homicide, it's actually sort of a, <laughs> an embarrassing but funny story. Um, I had, uh, at the same time that I auditioned for Homicide, I had also auditioned for One Life to Live, a soap opera that was shooting here in New York. <clears throat> and, um, you know, maybe two weeks after both auditions, I got the call that I got the role on One Life to Live that was um, going to be like a three-month arc or something. And then 24 hours later, I got the call that I had gotten the job um, on Homicide as a series regular. And I was so sort of undone, if you can believe it, because I, I was very nervous about going to a show, like you said, that, you know, is so, um, was so already established. It was all men, really. Um, and, uh, and, you know, having to move away from home, I was really nervous about it. And I almost said no. I almost was like, no, I think I'll stay in New York and do one life to live. Um, and because my whole family's in New York and I was just thinking, maybe that would be better. Um, of course, you know, I, I realized that, um, that homicide was the way to go. And I was terrified because it was my first real big job, and um, and I didn't know anybody, and um, I had really only met Tom Fontana in the auditions, um, and they my very first day, my very first scene was with Kyle Secor and Andre Brower, and um, and it was a very it was a it was really one of the first times you ever saw my character. So it was like the intro introduction of all of our characters in this particular scene. And I studied it for weeks. And I like had just got, I had all these notes in my like in my sides and I was like sweating. My upper lip was sweating. I was like so nervous. And I got to set that first day and we all shook hands and they were very sort of serious and quiet with me. And um, so they're like, okay, let's rehearse this first scene and block it. And, um, I put my sides down and then I just spat out all my lines and waited for my cue, spat out all my lines and waited for my cue. And, and Kyle and Andre were both like looking at me like this and I was thinking, did I study the wrong scene? 
And uh, then when we were done and they said, okay, we're going to, you know, we'll break for lighting, Kyle and Andre pulled me aside and Andre Brower says to me, don't ever learn your lines for rehearsal. He was like, don't show us up. And it did take oh, me a second to realize that he was joking. Um, but it was it, it, and because I think that um, he saw like a tear glisten in my eye. <laughs> and then they, they, you know, obviously they let me know. Now, uh, let's talk Sheila for a bit, because for uh, many of these seasons on Rescue Me, I think Sheila probably needed someone like Dr. Danny Santino just to sort her out, because she was kind of slightly batshit crazy, right? Let's just be completely honest. That's what but, I always say. Yeah, totally batshit crazy. <laughs> but there is, um, by season five, season six, and then the final season, Sheila really started to come into her own. And I, I just wanted to point out a particular highlight that I have, being such a fan, and, and then maybe you might tell us one of your highlights, but do you remember the episode, Sheila, where in the last, like, 10 or 15 minutes of the episode, it's just you and the camera and uh, and the interviewer, and uh, you're retelling a story about um, the towers coming down in 9-11. It's, like, one of the most amazing scenes from the show. Floor by floor, I just disappeared. Can you tell us about that particular episode and perhaps one of your highlights from the show? That whole episode and then that particular monologue um, was, it, it was and it will be forever one of the highlights of my career ever. And um, having not, not nothing to do with how it was received, um, but everything to do with how it felt. Like, first of all, when the script actually came out and it was titled Sheila, I remember, I, you know, I, it got delivered to me and I, I pulled it out of the envelope and saw that it was titled Sheila and I just started sobbing. And um, I, I, and I think, you know, the idea that Dennis Leary and Peter Tolan and Evan Riley had thought that m me and my character could, could sustain an entire episode you know, w just really touched me. And then I also was crying because I was like, oh, God, knowing them, she's going to be like, you know, stealing a baby, breaking out of jail, and, <laughs> and, and slipping a roofie to, like, you know, her next-door neighbor. You know, so I was also crying a little bit out of fear. Um, and then oh, when I read scenario, it. scenario, the episode has, has your name on it, your character's name, and that's your final episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> And, uh, but then once I read it and, um, you know, and the guys had said, you know, give us a call when you read the episode because, um, you know, one of the greatest things ever about working on Rescue Me and with Dennis and Peter and Evan was that they, uh, always wanted to discuss with their actors. They treated us all like such peers and such co-creators. And when I got in that day, um, and we always shoot the rehearsal. So we shot the rehearsal. And uh, it was very quiet on set. And I had gotten very, um, I had gotten very emotional at the end of it. And Dennis came up to me and he whispered something in my ear. And then he backed away. And he, you know, said something to the director. And the director said, we're just going to go right away. And I, I did it again with what he had whispered in my ear. And we did it in all one um, one take, and it's actually the take that ended up being on air with only one cut in it because they wanted to come in close. And what Dennis had whispered in my ear was, I want you to imagine that you're just talking about um, the drapes you chose. I want you to imagine that you're just talking about the grocery list you made. And at first it didn't make sense to me, and when I, but when I just stopped thinking too much and I did it and afterwards I spoke to him and he said you know this would be the first time that we would see and hear Sheila talking from her heart instead of her mind and that's where that you have to take the emotion and the drama out of it for anybody to be able to connect with her on this new level and it was genius. It was a genius direction. It was all him. That that whole that oh, the, the why I'm so proud of that monologue is is was because of Dennis's writing and his um, and his direction. And I just babbled on for so long, but that's why it's one of my biggest highlights for sure. <laughs>
<clears throat> well, one final question. I want to go back to necessary roughness for a moment. Uh, yeah. Hollywood Foreign Press has their ballots in their hands right now. And they, they watch USA. I mean, Piper Perabo got nominated last year, and Tony Shalhoub got several nominations and a win. Uh-huh. What would it mean to you, after working in the business as long as you have, to maybe get a Golden Globe nomination this year? Oh, uh, uh, beyond words, really. I, it's a, I, you know, thinking about the shows I've been on, like Homicide and The Wire and um, Rescue Me, where we've all sort of been underdogs in terms of, um, in terms of, of award shows. I, th- I feel like I've been conditioned to not even think of stuff like that, you know, when, when, and, um, and I guess us also shooting in a, in a town that's not an industry town, yeah. it's never really in our thought processes. You know, I, I, I think that we all sort of forget even sometimes that we are doing a show that's going to air. You know, we just, we have so much fun shooting and I, I love my crew and my cast so much that I think that w- what it would actually mean it would mean more to me for them, you know, regardless if it was um, something for the show on a whole or for me or for one of the other actors. I think that we would all sort of carry it together because it's so out of our jurisdiction of thought um, and that it would be such a, a treat and a surprise and a thrill and an honor um, but but really because we don't we don't think in those terms you know no there's never any like scenes that are kind of written you know like oh there's there's the monologue that they're going to submit you know for you know for the, for the Emmys or whatever you know you can and, and even the most fantastic shows I often feel like I can tell what their Emmy submission scenes are going to be, or, or even like what? If sometimes I can watch a show and say, "Oh, that's the that's the scene the girl auditioned for that episode with." Do you know what I mean? And, and I feel like I feel like um, what what what's really sort of um, genuine and true about our writers and and about the way the show is directed is that that's never part of the consciousness. We're just telling a story and. If it so happens to, um, you know, be remarkable in, in, to certain people in certain ways, um, it just makes it that much more worth it, I guess, you know, and, um, and, and a thrill. I, I don't know. It's hard to answer. <laughs> well, uh, good luck, um, Kelly, uh, for season two. Uh, I guess you're looking forward to going back to Atlanta to film season two, and um, and we wish you and the show all the best. It's obviously um, hit a nerve because it's doing really well for USA. Oh, 